and welcome to the Rondo. Come on, come on. Back welcome in to the Rondo game show. show. Yeah, yeah, game show. Oh, you know. Remember, remember, remember. The Rondo is not. It's not just one thing anymore. They should be used to it. They should be used to it now. Yeah. yeah. Sure Hopefully, you've watched the episodes from last week. If you haven't, go back and watch that. But this is the new show we have on the Rondo. You know. Bit more fun, bit more entertaining, more quizzes, more questions. We challenge these lots football knowledge. Yeah, you like to can see merchandise into That's it, the rondo. The, rondo. The, the judges are correct today. Marcus O'Neill and AA, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And on today's show, what's the topic of the day? You know what it is? It's the Euros. Everything Euros. Boom. So, as Marcus said, it's your boy and Marcus as your judges and co hosts in the rondo today we have hey joe tell them about yourself man. the cassinator joe the preferentino stupid bib got in the way shout out <laughs> Why not stupid no stupid bib is crazy uh season's over so we rep <laughs> other teams during the summer you know i mean we okay, come back okay, i hear it august okay. we'll get back to the arsenal you know I mean? i've seen something about you like a lot of italian um kits you know what i'm saying last time oh, we yeah, had the spezia yeah i got an inter milan kit oh, okay. hey i'm a bit of a i used to pick a team to be honest yeah literally you to pick a team England for the euros of course, of course, of course. Oh, England boy. Okay. Course, English and we boy, have yeah. a returner. Come on, it's man. It's been a little bit of a while, but he steps back into the <laughs> rondo today. My guy, the real Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> you see that man there? You see that man there? <laughs> no deep Marcus, here. Marcus, man, tell us about yourself, bro. How you feeling? All good, man. You know, season's done. Mm. You know, I was happy about Chelsea. We got, well, kind of got Europe now. <laughs> you, you, United, United kind of ruined it for us, yeah, yeah. which I'm quite upset about, but... You know, I was hoping City was going to win that, but you know, it is what it is. Moving on to the Euros, how are you feeling for the Euros? You excited? Yeah, yeah, I think we're quite, um, we're in a good place. Team's good. I mm. think we could actually get pretty far this year, I'll be real. Fair, fair, fair. Don't know so, about so winning you're it. England for the Euros? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't support Jamaica, isn't it? So. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> Only got one team to support. Say <laughs> less. They can only really support Jamaica in one competition anyway. They don't make it to the World Cup. Exactly. That as well, G. <laughs> like once every 10 years. <laughs> okay, without further ado, I guess we start the show. Engage the Rondo is the first round of the Rondo show. Contestants present a take on the show's topic and are grilled to test its strength. They are then rated by the judges. Let's go through how it will work. Contestants are to come forward to present a bold football take for a maximum of 60 seconds. The Rondo will then begin. (laughs) It will commence with what we call first pass free. So the judges will instruct their rival contestant to ask a challenging question on their take. After this is answered, the judges will get involved and lead full on grilling. The rondo was in full motion. They will then receive a score out of 10 from each judge for the first round utilizing our ACE framework, audacity, credibility, and explanation. The contestant score from each judge will then be averaged out of 10 and the winner will be announced for the first round. This is the first round, engage the rondo, Joe. Tell us what your rondo is on the Euros. So I think Gareth Southgate made a right decision bringing Adam Walton into the squad. And I think he should start for England. You think, Oy. Oh, you think Walton think should, should start, start for England? No, nah, that's wild still. The Euros. This guy's been playing Premier League football since January. Listen, I've, okay. seen, I've seen enough on the brother. He's a rare <laughs> he breed. before that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. Let, let's, let's get started. Okay, so, oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> so listen, Adam Walton is a rare type of midfielder that England has in the team. He's a... He's a DLP. He's a bit of a register. We don't have players like that. Um, since Michael Carrick, really, he's a sort of player that you know, he can receive the ball in a half turn from the defence and he can progress play forward. I think with England, you need someone in that sixth position who is good at progressing play. While Declan Rice is very, he's a very good player, he's very good at tackler, very good off the ball. I feel like his past progression into the like, middle and final phases isn't as strong. And I think having a, a, a proper playmaker like Wharton, who's comfortable in the sixth position, who could hold there and, and progress play would be much better for England and allow the centre mids to thrive more in the system. I watched Wharton a lot since he's joined from Crystal Palace. In fact, the first game I saw from him was Blackburn when he went to Chelsea in the FA Cup. And I was really mesmerised by his ability to really control the ball, to progress play. He's very confident. He's a good passer. He's a good tackler as well. And at Crystal Palace, he plays in a, in a pivot with um, Will Hughes, more box to box. So he's very comfortable playing with players that can you know roam forward on the pitch. And I think with England, if you had him oh. with Rice and Bellingham, I think that's a midfield three oh, that yeah, will sorry. do well. Time's up. Time's up. Time's up. No, but I can't let you was cooking in there. Man, 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 you got the reason. The reason. Yeah. What should the reason? Oh, I, I completely took my, time, my my other time, but it only went three seconds over. So no, no, no. no. <laughs> well, I, t- I started three seconds later. You did all right. You did all right. But anyway, before the judges come in, in terms of the roasting, my guy Marcus, you have first pass free, as we call it. So you can you can ask him a question, question. to basically open up the cooking on, on what he said. 
I just think it's wild he's saying Wharton over because who do you replace him with then? Rice, Mainu, so, Bellingham. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who you're replacing them with. So, so three you just said who. Yeah. who, who, who so if you want my front six, I'd play Wharton um, mm. in the sixth Tricks. position, Rice and Bellingham as a centre mid, and then I'd play Foden left wing, and then Saka and Kane. Oh, okay. So okay. I would. Okay. So I'd play Foden. Okay. So, so okay. the person so, who so, wouldn't so, be there. So you mean you it, think Wharton deserves it over Mainu? Yeah. yeah. So, well, so a big question, it's it? a question. So if you're talking about the season over the course of the season, I think Mainu really burst onto the scene in the season around November, December. Yeah. Wharton signed in January, so it's not like. A main who has like a year over him in terms of case study. So mm-hmm. people saying oh, a main who's been around for longer. It's not that much longer. Okay. I feel like the responsibility um, Wharton has shown has been enough to show me that he can play in that position. And like I said, unlike Mainu, we've kind of seen centre mids that play like Mainu. It's not a very unique profile of centre mid. For, for England. No, no, no. I mean, like, I think Wharton's a very unique profile. You get a Wharton or like a Carrick, it comes like really. In a generational sense, like, like he wants Carrick, every, you know. he is a, he's a very, he's a very, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a lot more combative than Carrick is. But I mean, that only adds to his abilities because that shows you can play lone six. Because maybe Carrick arguably couldn't the, play lone six as much he couldn't, because okay, off the ball he didn't have the maybe the the combativeness, the tenacity, he hasn't got the, the, the ability. Pause of that Carrick. He, 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 he has pause. He has pause. Uh, <laughs> <bro. laughs> Water, he's, he's got he's that. A, no, he's, he's a guy got, object. Water, <laughs> go watch the clips of him at Anfield, bro. That usually on pause out of that game. And I've seen you've seen that Anfield. I've got a question for you. So are you saying Water's a better player than Mainu? I think he's a better profile for what we need in the England team. Why is he a bit of profile for what we need? Can Mainu not because progress the ball forward just as much as he can? Uh, better than he can. No, I mean, no, he's not a better pass progressor than oh. Mainu. He's, he's not a better, better He's a better dribbler. He's a better ball carrier. The thing is, okay, that's fine. But the thing is with Mainu, Mainu slyly is not someone who at this stage I would trust as a lone six. I feel like if you had Mainu playing, you'd have to play Rice really next to him. Yeah. And I think that takes away if a Mainu bit from white, what... would it change anything? No, come on, man. What are we talking about here? <laughs> but listen, 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 this guy's started, man. We, 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 we've done enough race wars on the road. <laughs> <laughs> we've got another thing going on. Yeah, shout out Pogba, guys, man. Pogba, you've you done dirty, bro. No, but oh, yeah, still, Rice, Rice is a very important player in the midfield. And I feel like if you look at the way Arsenal have used Rice, when Arsenal weren't as great run of form, they played Jorginho or Partey as like a DLP behind him and allowed Rice to do what he does more, he does better than he does when he's a six. So he can move around the pitch. He's a good tackler in open space. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter if he's out wide he can go box to box he can drive through and I feel like with Mainu at the base it's less the pass progression is less for me and I feel like Rice would have to drop a bit deeper and I wouldn't want to you know just that, give that the deep, I wouldn't want to give the responsibility to Bellingham alone to try you know try and make yeah. things happen yeah. you'd rather have two centre mids because well, I mean the I'm alternative nice that's why the alternative for me isn't even Mainu starting I don't think Mainu would start in any circumstance the alternative for me oh, would be no. If you really want to drip it and sacrifice rice and then move Foden into the middle, so sacrifice I think, rice, I sacrifice think, rice, and play oh, okay, 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 and then space, play space, Foden cool. in the middle. I feel like either of those scenarios, you get a midfielder, you get two midfielders who can bomb forward. And I thought Mainu, you may need someone just to drop back a li- little deeper. It's interesting that, that you trust Wharton more than Mainu, but but no, you you explain well. Sometimes from what I've seen from Mainu at Man United, he is out of position a lot and I don't know if that's Man United system but I've seen him caught out of position system. he can get isolated he can get isolated and he does look a little bit like a little bit <laughs> where should I be yeah. where yeah, should yeah, I be yeah, yeah. The Palace but, game mm, it's probably the United you know team though that United feels United a bit shaky probably, anyway I'll give him that yeah. well, I think that's cracking enough. player though Mainly's a great player I think that's enough um, cool have you got alright cool so as you know in terms of assessing your argument we do it by our ace framework audacity credibility and explanation <laughs> Audacity, I can't lie, it was there still. It was there still. I, I, I'm surprised to hear Wharton starting. I know he's a, he's a player many admire, but for him to actually start, a lot of people were even surprised that he made the 33 man squad, the, the longer squad that I think Southgate did. has announced, which, which I, I'm, I'm not surprised by. So, yeah, no, I like the audacity. In terms of credibility as well, I think um, you, you know it was fairly credible by the time you got towards even the first minute and then explaining it, so he did well there. Explanation, I think. It was it, it was it was good. It was good, but that's the only area where I think, you know, I feel like once Marcus Marcus mentioned the main new thing and then it, it was a little bit hazy, then it got quite good, you know, in terms of you you know, you properly analyze them, but all in all, solid argument. I'm giving it an eight. An eight out of ten. So a good first round. Thank you. Um, I'm in perfect agreement with AA here. I thought your audacity was out of this world. To be honest, I actually rate. <laughs> what, this word. I rate. I rate Wharton as a player uh, highly, and he's, he's got a bright future ahead of him. But he should not be starting for England in no sense of the way. Out of all the midfielders we have, starting Wharton is 
insane. <laughs> <laughs> so very audacious credibility. I like the way you explained it, especially in that minute that you had. I feel like you had a very good structured argument. You explained it, not explained it. You, um, it was a very credible argument the way you structured it as well. In terms of your explanation itself, um, a lot of us question you. What I would have liked, just because yeah, um, you had time to think about this beforehand, bring some evidence, give, give me some stats that kind of prove what you're saying. Because I have some disagreements. I, I don't feel feel like. Um, Wharton's passing is to the level that you say it is so if you had some stats to back it up it might have made it a bit better so I give you a 7 out of 10 Fair enough, Ted. thank you what do you think Wharton's passing mainly is better than Wharton factually <laughs> <laughs> just factually I don't know what this, what this thing is man I feel like you need a pass no big stuff. club bias at all in it, in it I just think um, so better, than, better than Jackson moving on huh? to Marcus Marcus now wild man yeah. so moving, <laughs> moving on with Engage the Rondo so the first round for you Give us your rondo on the Euros. So my take is Anthony Gordon should start. Okay. Because hmm. I think, I think Man Gordon- Man laughed outside, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, Bro, yeah, Gordon crazy, has man. been fire this season. I'd probably say, out of Newcastle's attack, he's been their best attacker. Right. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry, sorry. No, no, no. All right, cool, let's get started. Cool, so Anthony Gordon, for me personally, he's been Newcastle's best attacker. Mm -hmm. About every game, he's he, do, he does not have a bad game, in my Jesus opinion. Christ. No, nah, he's the best attacker. If, if, Isaac's, if Isaac's not there, <laughs> Isaac's always injured. Isaac's injured no, all the time. Yeah, Isaac's injured all the time. Gordon's, the guy's never injured. Mm -hmm. He runs 24-7 every single game. He, he tries to beat a man compared to a lot of what the other England wingers are like. You've got Saka, not too great at beating a man. Like People are saying Foden play left wing. I don't agree with Foden playing left wing. I think Gordon brings you a lot more, a bit more pace down the wing as well. Mm -hmm. Can cross the ball, good at shooting. He's just an all-round better winger than Foden I think Foden should okay. be in the midfield as a cam Bryce Bellingham Foden Gordon Saka Kane that's okay. what I think the team should be personally fair enough all done yeah, yeah all done yeah yeah 50 seconds all good okay fair enough so first pass three. Oh yeah yeah sorry Joe first I, I wanted to get in on it already <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I just feel like Gordon isn't as technically secure as someone like a Foden who would play out wide and I feel like he's very inexperienced at this level um, that we're, we're, we're required. If you talk mm. about Walton in, in experience, Gordon is similarly inexperienced, doesn't have many England caps. So do you think that will be a hindrance to him performing as well as he did for Newcastle where he's in a comfortable system? He hasn't really played with these players before. I get what you're saying, it's a different system, but I feel what he will bring to England team is different than our other wingers. Because he's very, very, especially him being such of a big runner, he'll always track back as well. He's doing a lot of running, especially if you've got Shaw there, Shaw attacks a lot. If you've got them two on one side of the wing, constant running. I don't think so that'll be so, up. So you're bringing in Gordon for his defensive um, No, not for his for defensive output. Mm. He's attacking output. He's probably, he's Newcastle's, what, second top goal scorer? Obviously, his attacking output is great, but I'm saying he also brings a lot to your defence because he's always down to track back. This is also what I like about him. He's well, always uh, active on the wing. He, yeah, he works. He's, uh, his work rate's crazy. Well, question. Given that yeah. England wanna have, have one of the most talented squads in the Euros, mm. so we want to go at teams, preferably. Yeah. What does he provide that you would say a Foden doesn't provide in the attacking sense? I don't think Roden, Foden is the best on the wing. I feel he's better in the midfield. But why? Like Foden, because Foden's number one, Foden's not really too fast. Technically gifted, he's obviously better. But what I like about Gordon, he's always on to take on a man. No matter who he's playing against, he will try to take on that man. Every every time I see Newcastle play, he will try it no matter what. And that's what I really like about him. And if he's not trying to get the shot on, he'll get a cross on or something. He, he doesn't really lose the ball too much from what I see. I think he's just all round a better profile for the wing than Foden essentially okay okay no it makes sense so you, you like the fact that he takes his man on he runs in behind a bit more something mm. different yeah but if we're no, saying no, no, no. he never said run in behind I was, he... wait, I was waiting for that you know what I mean but he obviously does that yeah come on yeah come on he knows what I'm trying to say I love it I love it I love it you know I was imagining that he must have said that no he didn't say that I was waiting for that you know that's what I was meaning though isn't it? you know that's what I was meaning I guess it makes sense for your lineup. But let's say now, because we know it looks like Southgate wants to play Bellingham 10. Yeah. So if Bellingham's playing 10, uh, and we go with a Rice uh, and Manu or Water mm. or whoever else Southgate surprises us with in, in like the in the more retracted eight roles. Uh, eight six roles. Trent, so Trent in midfield. Yeah, he might do that as well. So if that's the case, if yeah. you've got like a, let's say a Rice, Manu, Bellingham in the 10 midfield, what what happens then? Would you still play Gordon and, and you leave Foden on the bench? Oh, that's a, you can't leave Foden on the bench. That's the problem. That's why, for me, he has to go into midfield and you're going to have to drop 
my unit was something in my opinion because okay. you're saying um because even how you mentioned Gordon hasn't got that much experience with the team my unit's got a lot less and I feel like at least Gordon has Gordon even got a cap yet Gordon yeah he did he played last game yeah Okay. Like, I feel like um, I know he hasn't got the experience with the team, but he's got a lot more Premier League experience than the other okay, two, Walter and Manu, innit? I'll just say to that then, mm. if you're then saying, some people would say that Bellingham's best position is, 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 ad- is as advanced as possible. So, are you saying you want to put Gordon in the team, mm. which basically means that Bellingham has to play pivot or eight? Wait, what are you playing? 4 yeah, um, 3 1 or 4 3 4 3 3. So, four, three, three. Rice okay. 6, Bellingham 8, Foden 10. And I feel like, like you've got a lot more experience in that midfield. And I know Bellingham's been obviously a lot more advanced to the pitch this season. Yeah. But I don't think that's his. I don't think he's going to be playing that high next season. Like, let's be real. I think I feel like Newt, obviously Real Madrid are going to get Mbappe in or whatever. He's yeah. not going to play that high, in my opinion. He's going to okay. be more of a two, two eights and a six, which I think Real are going to go back to. I'm not denying, but Bellingham will get up the pitch here and there. But I don't think he's. He's been great this season, scoring goals. But I don't think it's his, like proper position I feel like he's better as a six who gets up a bit more box to box kind of player okay Bellingham as a six eight 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 <laughs> okay, okay. say damn right. <laughs> right. 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 in terms of audacity um, I wouldn't say it was to the level of Joel's but it was very audacious um, mm. I've, I've had heard this um, point that um, Gordon should start because of the dynamism he brings rather, compared to the rest of the wingers um, that England have um, so I thought that was Somewhat audacious. I, I liked your explanation of it, um, of how you, you talked through um, his pace, the, what he offers both defensively and in attacking sense. I did, I, I do feel like you missed out some points. As yeah, I said, behind and running in yeah. behind. That's I probably, I think, I think that's probably the, the most key component that he offers because England don't have have a lot of players running behind. I would have liked you to go in and talk about how what what Kane does for the team and how Gordon would help that because Kane mm. likes to drop deep and put, put balls in behind and if you have players like Foden and Saka it's, most, it's more, less likely for them to see that run or, or see the pass coming so I would like you to talk about that a bit more in terms of your credibility I wouldn't say the argument was very credible um, I, I, I don't see him starting I don't see mm. a place for him especially with you having to restructure the whole midfield I, you mean no Gareth Southgate is not going to go for a Foden, Bellingham and Right, it's midfield. It's, it's just so. Like, what do you think the team's going to be, by the way? Genuinely, yeah. Main will start. I think he will as well. To be fair, but I think it's going to be. I think it's Rafa's going to play four two three one. I think it's going to be Rice maybe. Whether that's the right decision is different. But yeah, I, yeah, I think four three three is the right decision. Mm. Like we've all said, but maybe I think he's not a risk taker. Is it? Better than in the ten, I actually think. Foden on the left, Saka on the right. But anyway, back yeah. to um, Marcus's argument. Um, so sadly, I have to give you a five. It's gone, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'll go on. So going mm. down on that ace framework, I feel like it was fairly audacious. I think it's not really down to you, but I think it becomes less audacious the fact that Marcus Rashford isn't even in the squad. Otherwise, I think then it would be like perhaps it. a more daring <coughs> thing because I think Gordon's of that more Marcus Rashford type of profile as in a player that can give us penetration, can give us running in behind, can give us 1v1 ability. Allow it, man. <laughs> But, um, you should have heard the other one he said yeah. earlier. <laughs> he said beat him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But because... Guys, 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 focus. <laughs> but yeah, but because Gordon is the only one with that profile, uh, it, it becomes less audacious. But I think... I thought the explanation was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you kind of clearly explained how he's different to all of our other players. He's got good 1v1 ability, so I rated that as well. Credibility was the only thing. I think that ability to run in behind that you mm-hmm. didn't mention, given the way... All of our other players, particularly in advanced positions, you think, okay, better than them a little bit, but if, if better than playing more mm. attractive, you don't know. But Kane, Saka, yeah, Odin, more ball to all more to feet players. Mm. So I feel like that for me was the only thing, but I felt like everything else was was thirty. So I give it a seven. Yeah, bless man. A bit, bit, bit <laughs> nice. <I'm not laughs> it okay, let's do scores from the first round. So Joel got uh, an eight from myself and a seven from Marcus for his take that. Adam Wharton should start for England. Good boy take. And that means he scored overall 7.5. Marcus went second. And for his take on that, Gordon should start for England. He got a seven from myself and five from I thought that was <laughs> his namesake. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, Joel wins the first round with a 7.5 overall on average. And Marcus goes in not too far off with a six on average. So let's move into the second round. Withstand the Rondo, where we give a Rondo to you, for you to defend. The second round is called Withstand the Rondo. In this round, things get a little bit more interesting. Contestants have to think on their feet and defend the take given to them by the judges. 
Let's step through how this will work. So the judges will reveal a take they have formed themselves or from the wider Rondo family and fan base. Contestants will have to defend the take for 60 seconds. And then of course, the Rondo will begin. Again, it will commence with first pass free as the judges instruct their rival contestant to ask a challenging question. Then the judges come in <laughs> and the Rondo goes into full flow as they grill them further on their defense. They will then receive a score out of 10 from each judge for the second round utilizing the ACE framework, audacity, credibility, and explanation. The contestant score from each judge will then be averaged out of 10 and the winner will be announced for the second round. So Marcus, you're gonna start this round. Mm -hmm. So the rondo we are giving you today is Gareth Southgate is the right manager to lead England to the Euros and beyond. <laughs> you sh you've shagged me with that one. Bro. You might as well give it to him, bro. No, no, that's, I don't want that's that. That's on one. you, bro. Oh, I hate you, that guy. You shot me in the foot here, man. So I hate that guy. Give me five seconds to think. Ten, you're going to give you 10 seconds. Think. think. <sighs> yeah. He's got a few seconds now. Where's that, that start counting? <laughs> <It's laughs> an awful take. He has to think about that. Oh, I'm going to try to defend the guy I don't like, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, cool. Five, four, three. Well, what I'd say about Southgate, uh, what he's done with the players, he's brought a lot of the players together, which I think is a is a great thing to have, especially with our international team. Because mm. we saw what happened with the teams before when we had Rooney and them, man. It just didn't work. Great team, didn't work. So I think now what he's done, he's got everyone more like a collective. And I can understand why he, he likes to play certain players and he doesn't play certain players because I feel like he's got that sort of relationship with them. So I say the big thing what Gareth Southgate has done is brought a great sort of relationship to the England squad and they all kind of click a bit more than we used to like I do see some great games that we that he's obviously managed with us and he does a couple of good things um, obviously tacti tactically I'd probably say he needs to get that a bit better but except from that I feel like um, he could get us a Euros this year I mean it's not something impossible with the team that we've got <laughs> <laughs> you shake me with this bro <laughs> go on it's not too best with the team that we've got. I feel like we could get far in this competition. We could even we could even get to the final, maybe a win, hopefully. We're in the final but, the last time. Yeah, 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 yeah that's true. Time. You know the thing is, yeah, you can see his Fuck face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sweating thinking, what else can I say about this guy? What are you saying? Fucking yeah. hell, bro. No, that's cute. Cool. Yeah, yeah, bro. Oh, we, we, could win. Win. we could win. I was like, what can I say, bro? <laughs> nah, nothing. That was not good. You, you, you might as well give him like a two or something. You didn't believe in a word. I didn't believe in one. Because I don't, bro, he's, he's no, crap. I hate you. He's crap, he bro. Sucks. That's the only good thing he does is that they, they actually look like a team. That's the only good thing he, he does. nice suits. Yeah. Oh, yeah, first was free. First was free, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, go, 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 go on, go on, go on. So, I think we're all um, pretty um, clear, like unanimous, that Southgate's kind of not done the best with this generation of players. We all feel uh, like I, don't, I don't agree with you. No, he's, he's got far in it, but I feel like but if we feel if like, we're someone oh, better. First pass free, Sorry, bro, this <laughs> first pass free is wrong. I feel like I feel, I feel, <laughs> so I feel like we're a better team in Italy and should have won that Euros. Uh, I feel like we're a better team in Croatia. We should have made a final that World Cup. Uh, I feel like if we if we had a big more bigger you know stronger what, what, what are you will. Comparing it? What are you comparing it? So, so I feel like <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I feel like he is very risk averse, and I feel like he's left cards on the table in situations where a more bold manager would have you know gone for the kill and finished mm, these games off. Made it to where we so got to you, big place. man. Sorry, big man. I'm sorry. Let me take my touch, fam. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like he's very risk averse and, and a, a more bold manager would have taken us a bit further than he had, maybe possibly won us a trophy. So do you think that he can learn that to become braver or do you think that's just not how he is? And as a result, why would you want to keep him as manager? Well, I hope it's something he will do more this Euros. The only, the only bad thing I'll say about the last Euros and World Cup, he didn't really make too many changes. I feel like sometimes when the team just needs a little, a little something, a little extra push, he's sort of more defendant to keep on who he likes or who he thinks plays well. Do you think he can do that? I think if he changes that up for this Euros, I think we could actually yeah, win it. The question, do you think he can do that? I think he can do it. Okay. I think he can do it. I feel, I feel like he sort of <laughs> might have seen from his mistakes from the last two ones from us getting so close right. and us not getting anything. So but I feel like this time, I feel like you have a little swap up. Get a couple more Madison this time. He didn't even play Madison last yeah, time. Yeah, no, Crazy. Did. But outside of the changes, mm. when you're looking actually at him tactically as a manager, you said that's something that he needs to work on. Mm. But I would say if we want to win trophies, you... you we have to be bold in situations. So when we look at the last Euros, at home, at Wembley, in the final, he scored early and he sat back for 75 minutes. Is this a manager that you have, like, how do you see that, how do you see that changing? Like, who does that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry <laughs> I, who, who does that? No, who I does? agree, innit? Like, it's even hard to defend that, I'll be real. 
I feel like, especially when it's a final, at least get two goals before you even start about thinking about sitting back a bit. Mm. I feel like you, as long as you've got the two goals there, at least you know if they do score one, you've still got a bit of a cushion. Yeah, yeah. But after one goal and you're defending for 75 minutes, diabolical. Especially when you're the better team at home, <laughs> at Wembley. Wait, you come on. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Bro, 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 it's hard, bro, 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 bro. It's, it's hard to defend this guy, man. <laughs> it's hard bro, to defend this guy. The mask. What's your defense for that? Like, how, defense for how, that. How does he improve that in this year? How does he? How does he become more confident? More confident this year. I feel like he just needs to make more changes. Make sure we get more well, goals. Will he? Will he? You're, you're telling me how he? Will, will he? he? Hopefully, mate. <laughs> 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 right. I, I, we can round off this one. Hey, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. You've gone down. What's, what's, what's... <laughs> get the cameras. Get the cameras. <laughs> So I'm, I'm gonna start. Hey, so. bro, they, I don't like the guy, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... I don't like the guy. It's, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to defend the guy when I see him do so many problems. You know what I mean? He didn't even bring Ben White, bro. <laughs> the hell? I'm gonna start. I thought it was in terms of audaciousness. Well, you because, chose it. Yeah, well, let me talk, bro. But <laughs> well, you didn't let me talk. Sharp man. <laughs> in terms of audaciousness, the way I'm gonna um, assess it is like how challenging it, challenging it is to defend mm. this argument. Yeah. Um, I think it is challenging. I do think that um, Southgate has a lot of pros that you didn't quite kind of touch on because mm. if you compare Southgate to the managers in the past for England, he's he's more successful than yeah, no, ninety percent of yeah. England managers. So um, there's some things that you could have touched on that you didn't. So I don't think it's as hard of an argument as you're making it out to be. Mm. Um, so I, I wouldn't rate you too highly on the audaciousness in terms of your um, credibility. I know you struggled with it a lot. You don't really agree with it, so no. it's like you're, kind of, you're kind of battling with your argument. Your explanation was decent at times. I did have you a bit higher rated before until the last segment. Where you just, what, did I, what did I say? You just, you just started arguing against. Um, <laughs> the, He's the like, yeah, I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice. Yeah. Take, so I marked you a bit further down for that. So mm, yeah, that's fair. What well, I'm going to rate you for this one is a three. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Still, I thought he was going to pull out a one or something. So yeah, no, no. a nice guy. Yeah, I've given you a three as well. Um, I gave this right after your explanation and well after you yeah after you finished your explanation and I thought with the way that you were going when you were arguing that it was going to go up but you kept on just kind of going <laughs> up and down in terms of like kind of arguing with it and then kind of agreeing with us <laughs> and cooking Southgate a bit <laughs> so sides. I think in terms of audacity I, I, I don't think it's the easiest but I don't think it's crazy hard mm. because yes I don't think he's I don't think he personally he's the manager for us, but he has been the most successful, as, as Marcus said. It's true. Um, in 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 years, um, in my lifetime, um, credibility. I thought the credibility was okay. It was credible, but for me, it just wasn't strong. So that's why I've got like a quite a big cross with the explanation <laughs> because for me, it was yeah. You know, because you mentioned the the um, the man management, which yeah, I think he's really good out, at that. But it's a huge thing. Like our England team, you can see that they, they love going to England. They're mm. all boys now. Yeah. They even, you know, some people think that, you know, they're even too close. Some people see them on nights out. Um, won't really name, <laughs> won't name them. But yeah, no, I just feel like in terms of the explanation, feel like you got too caught into your own beliefs. Yeah, facts. And you start cooking them a little bit. So yeah, free for me. Yeah, that's cool. So we're going to do the things a bit different for you, Cass. Rather than um, giving you a rondo, I'm going to ask you a question and you have to answer it in your rondo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. So I love this game. So your question is. Whatever we say. So, so wait. You ask me a question, and then yeah. I'm gonna what? answer it in the in the, in the rundown. You have to yeah, defend it. I have to answer it in the rundown. Yeah. 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 Who is your dark horse for the Euro 2020 full tournament, and why? <clears throat> Ooh, I don't even know. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, we'll give you a little one. Yeah, that's a good one. So. Five seconds. Yeah, that's a good one. Now. Make sure you actually choose a dark horse. Yeah, don't say France. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Um, and your time starts in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to say my dark horse for the Euros is Germany. I feel like uh, the German team, they've had, a, they've had a difficult time in the last few tournaments. So I think, you know, the last World Cup, they went out in the group stage. The World Cup for that, they went out in the group stage. Euros, they went out in the round of 16 uh, to England. Mm -hmm. I feel like, however, this squad... Whereas in the World Cup and in the last year, it was quite a newish team. Some of the old players that won the World Cup in 2014 and started to phase out. I feel like this team's been together for a few years now. So I feel like under um, Nagelsmann, I think they've started to get things together. I feel like the, the team chemistry is improving. You see that in games they've had against the big sides. I think they played France a few months ago and I think they, 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 I think they, I think they lost that game, but they performed really well in that game. I think that was the game when they played Havertz left back, which was quite weird. I feel like as a team, they're getting it together. And I feel like this is a tournament where, you know, a lot of their players are getting to that experienced age. You know, your likes of Kimmich, he's getting to the age of his prime. You know, Havertz is getting to that age as well. Obviously, they've still got some very experienced players such as Neuer, he's in there. I think as a team, 
there are other there are other teams you'd fancy more. Obviously, France, England, they'll take the limelight. Even Portugal, but I think Germany are a team not to sniff, not to you know, dismiss. Mm. Okay, um, first pass three. First pass three. I'm not gonna lie. I would have probably said the same team. Mike, I'll be yeah. real. I'll be real. I'll be real. I'll be real. Yeah, that, that's who I thought Big of, isn't it? But no defender. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good touch. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie, but I feel like there is other teams out there that could probably pull off something a bit more different. I feel like Portugal would have probably been my other one. I feel like the Portugal team. It's a terrible well, first part. You, you, well, you, you don't <laughs> think they're a dark horse? Portugal are strong favourites. Like, no, mm, I don't know. I don't know because even when Portugal do have a quite a good team, they never really. Do it. that well, in my opinion. Like after Ronaldo's, obviously he's he's going any year. Ronaldo's going. Yeah, Ronaldo's yeah. But even when they had, I feel like they had a better team before, and they never really achieved two. Well, I guess they got the Euros. Luckily, but, but, fair but enough. But back on Germany. Give us a grilling question to start. <laughs> 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 yeah, you got one, man. Go on, you, know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because oh. I agreed with him, so I'm just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, bump up. But, <laughs> Make sure you bump up my score for that. One. Let's do the game. Sure, man. Yeah, let's, man. Let's do the game. Reflect right, that story. Ger- Ger- Germany are quite a big nation with quite a lot of um, European history, okay. um, and I wouldn't say they've declined to the point where they've they're that far outside of I the totally disagree. The, the, the five favorites to win the, the tournament. Um, what I would compare them to is a Holland. Holland have a. I would say that's my personal dark horse. What? Why would you say? Germany are more equipped to be the dark horse rather than Holland who have a very outstanding defence very um, a lot of new players who went there at the last time coming in who've performed brilliantly for their clubs a nation that had a lot less recent success, success as well, well. Okay. why would you say that they're, they're less likely to be the dark horse than Germany okay so there's many reasons firstly I just genuinely don't believe they have a chance of winning the Euros really I don't oh. think their attack is anywhere near good enough um, they're going to play Broby up front I'm not a massive fan of Broby they've got like Depay's depth I'm not really a ma- like, they've got good centre backs but you know we've seen Holland in the last World Cup. They're great defenders. You know Dumfries did really well in the last World Cup. But you know you're, you're, they were relying on Weghorst to get all the goals. And they they, 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 did, they did make it far. They were decent. No, in the they, World no, Cup, they, they did make it they far. But no, but that was the look like, at the teams they they beat like the USA and this and that. And you know that, the four, that, that team versus kick up that, to that, that, that versus the team No, but I mean the Argentina quality. game that was a great comeback. But they're not the man to man. They couldn't really match them. So I don't I, I didn't generally believe it. Secondly, I don't like to throw away my dark horse the way people will say Turkey's a dark horse last time. I genuinely think that like, in this tournament, yeah, yeah. I think a dark horse for me in this tournament, because I think there's two clear favourites, France and England. I think they're the two clear favourites yeah. and one of them will win it. I feel like my dark horse would be someone who's like four favourite, someone somewhere in that area. Yeah. Because I think Portugal- audacious? No, but the thing- Dark horse? I, I don't even think Germany are top four though. That's the, the thing, way, I, that's opinion. the thing. We're forgetting Germany's track record since they won the World Cup. Euro 2016, I think they lost to France. I think it was the semi-final. 2018 World Cup, bro, they lost, they lost in the group stage. A career smacking them two nil, bro. Euro 2020, they lost to England, uh, two one was it two 0 yeah. Round of 16 yeah. got knocked out. They even they even struggled in their group with right. like, like it, Hungary. Last World Cup, they got knocked out in the group stage again, so they haven't made it out of knockout stage in the last two okay. World Cups. Well, sorry to interrupt you. So to then say that they're a massive team, you know, but but this squad, this squad, forget the name, this squad, it's great, ain't achieved nothing. But it's a good okay. But it ain't achieved nothing. It hasn't achieved anything. But if you look at the squad itself. And you look at the their performance, especially of the German teams. The Germans, a lot of players they have more players from the German team than they ever had, had in the past. If you look at Verts, you saw Verts against against France. Look the way he, what he displayed. Yeah, they've got players of very high profile. So the expectation for Germany has definitely increased compared to their last few tournaments. Would you not say that as well? Definitely, but I think a part a part to play in that is that the last few tournaments we had higher ex- we had high expectations for Germany, especially in 2018 they were the champions, and 2020 they are big names, so they always have high expectations. I feel like if anything, the only reason. Germany are seen as having high expectations because we'll some of the hurts. players, some of the players are doing well for their clubs. But yeah. still, as a team, as a country, Germany, their track record in recent years has not been very good. And I feel like there are teams I've, that have overtaken them uh, in terms of the pecking order in Europe. I've got something for you that you didn't mention though. Who's hosting the Euros? I know they're hosting the Euros. So that, yeah, how's that, how's that like, not like a big that element and something that's gonna be yeah, but, like that yeah, but how do you not mention it? Because, <laughs> well, why would I mention that in terms of dark? I forgot about that. I wouldn't mention that in terms of dark horse because that would imply that they're heavy favourites because they're the host. It makes them more likely. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, but I don't think. Yeah, but I'm saying that I don't think that that will be too much of a factor because I feel like they're still far ahead. They're still far behind the quality of France, England. In a one, I got, I got something to back you, but I can't. If there's a one v one game. <laughs> okay, look, Germany, the last time they hosted the World Cup, they came third, so they didn't win it. So, you okay. know, they, they're, not, they're not one of the favourites there. You know, England had the final last time, they didn't win it. Yeah, no way, but, but they didn't win it. 
the last the host fought that France. They didn't win it. The host fought yeah, yeah. that Ukraine and Poland. The well, they didn't win it. So who's the last time? So the last time the host, the last time the in the last three years is that okay. most of the time the host gets to the final. The host, the last time the host won the Euros, Greece maybe. Greece didn't host that Euro. So so who are you thinking? Bro, probably like the eighties or the seventies. So it doesn't really matter what who yeah. hosts tournament. If you're far you behind your France, bump, bro, if you're on, far behind France and England in terms of quality, it don't matter. In a one v one game at Germany Stadium against France, they're losing. In my opinion, mm. they are losing. I don't care what the fans say. Deutschland. Deutschland. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Deutschland. They're gonna lose. That's a as well. That's crazy. <laughs> they're gonna lose, bro. They got bare your brothers in that country, you know. They should be playing for Ghana, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Really. Though? No, no, he, he's brilliant. got, got bare Ghanaians in the, in the Oh, country. in the team? Okay, yeah, no, the team in the country in itself. Oh, fair, I didn't know that. Yes, and guys. All right, man. cool, I think that's enough. Uh, we need to move on. Um, so, I'm going to start. Audaciousness. Um, the team we went for, I don't think it was very audacious. Um, obviously, when, when you're picking um, dark horses, you're going to leave out teams like England and France. So, but and, and Portugal and for Portugal. me, there for yeah. Yeah, top three. So, that, you have a section of other teams. I think Germany is quite high on that list, so I wouldn't call it too audacious. In terms of credibility, I, I thought it was very credible, your argument. Um, you kind of, you, you gave us a, a overall picture of, of Germany in the last few years and why you believe that they're um, the dark horses. Your explanation wasn't too bad either. Um, you brought up a lot of statistics from 2018 and where they, where they got knocked out, um, um, what, what round they, and stage they got knocked out. Um, I feel like uh, you could have gone in on the team a bit more and how the team has um, been built up together, how it's so yeah. different from before and why you believe these individual players make them dark horses, which you didn't do enough. But overall, I'm going to give you a seven out of ten. Okay, cool. Just yeah. show the fans. Seven out of ten. Um, I thought the explanation was really good. Um, I'm kind of going backwards on the A, a-, a- spam because I'm starting off with what was good. Overall, credibility was good as well. I, I don't know. I just wasn't feeling the audacity too much, and I felt like maybe you could have baked into that the explanation. I felt like the fact that you just kind of skipped over that Germany are the host nation. That doesn't, oh, that, 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 doesn't yeah. that doesn't help my argument. That doesn't help my argument. Yeah, but you can't, you can't just ignore it then. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I ain't going to say points to help you. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you can't just ignore it. Nah, I hear it, that doesn't it? Um, I understand. Yeah, I, understand. I just feel like there was maybe better dark horses that you could have picked. Like, like, like yeah. who? Like, like Croatia or something. Croatia, yeah. Netherlands. Croatia, Croatia always do well though, isn't it? Switzerland. But I can't. Obvi- obviously, th- those are... They're, they're, but Switzerland. I am backing them. Switzerland is a mad shout though. I don't think they would. But that's a proper dark horse. The thing is, I'll be saying these countries. I feel like Croatia because I feel like they could actually... not be in it. Some equations well, are better one. You need to win last. You look at you straight in the face and say Imagine Switzerland are my dark. That's a mad dark horse. <laughs> a, a little bit, but I feel like Italy always. They and never usually have the best team. But North they always Macedonia, my dark. You know what I mean? So I usually yeah, give them that. Them man got Alioski and them man. I said Alioski. You know what I mean? It was still good. So they want the whole Macedonia. Macedonia, F Greece and them. We need to move on. We need to move on. Sorry, I'm gonna say my score. I'll give you a six point five. I still feel that. Yeah, it was. We announced scores for the second round with Stan the Rondo. So. Uh, no, Marcus started actually. Hmm. Yeah, so Marcus started uh, with the Southgate take that he had to defend. <laughs> a take that he, ha- he clearly had the capability <laughs> to defend, but just didn't want to. Yep. So <laughs> he scored the three all round from both me and Marcus. The other Marcus, Marcus O. So overall, he gets a three on average. Joel, um, he was asked a question who is his dark horse for the Euros? He chose <laughs> Germany. Defended it well. Not the most audacious take in the world, though, in both me and Marcus's view. Marcus gave him a 7. I gave him a 6.5. He goes in with a 6.75. And he de- he again wins the second round. So Joel going in quite strong. But the final round <laughs> is always... There's always a lot to play for. I'm going to need a 10 like, out of 10. We, we like to fuck about in the final round, so... <laughs> Conquer the Rondo. In this round, is all put on the line. The final round of the Rondo show. Contestants go head-to-head in the quiz to decide on the winner, but of course there are some twists. They are asked 10 questions. We start with two word association questions, dubbed two-touch and one-touch. In the two-touch round, contestants will compete in football word association, having five seconds to deliver their answer. In the one-touch, contestants will only have three seconds to deliver their answer. Contestants will then be given a buzzer and go into typical head-to-head questions. However, there are still more twists. Contestants can be asked difficult split questions, where it may be in their interest to work together as if neither succeed in answering the question in 30 seconds, they will both be docked two points should they proceed to the next round. Contestants can also be asked special nutmeg questions. (laughs) These ones are a real stitch up. The question will be about one of the contestants' teams. 
And if they allow their rival contestant to get it, they will be docked five points. Because why are you letting another man know about your team? <laughs> At the end of all the 10 questions, the round is complete. Scores will be tallied and the winner for the overall fixture will be announced. First one is the provisional squad, England's provisional squad for the Euro 2024. Yeah? All right, cool. We're going to start off with, you're, you're not in the lead to start off with you. Oh, so he's going to say a name, I say a name until yeah. one of us. Okay. <clears throat> Ready, yeah? It's a list of 33, so you, hopefully... You can... Anyway, go on. Jordan Pickford. Aaron Ramsdale. Uh, Adam Morton. Trent Amazala Armour. Bellingham. Carl Walker. Foden. Stones. Palmer. Bramford. Shaw. Rice. Oh. Shaw. Who? Hmm? I said Shaw. Oh, he said Shaw, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said Shaw, you know. Are you giving him time, man? <laughs> Kane. Gordon. Watkins. Saka. Rice. Palmer. Wait, I said Palmer. I said Palmer. He said Rice. Oh, did he? Said rice. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah, because oh. I said, yo, I said oh, Palmer. God. <laughs> yeah. I said, what, what about, what about? Um, okay, your, your one touch today. <clears throat> so I won, right? Yeah. Yeah, you won. Yeah. Your one touch today is. One point. Yeah, yeah, yes, announce me as the winner, man. Come on. It's teams to, who have qualified for the Euros this, this, this year. This year. Yeah. No. England. France. Germany. Portugal. Scotland. Switzerland. Austria. Croatia. North Macedonia. I don't think they have. No, they didn't qualify. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Why did you yeah, that, that was a wild one. I don't know, bro. Man. Man. Wow, in that's man's shot. They're on the last one, isn't it? Man's a shot. I hear it, though, because you start after you, you start after you, you start after thinking about you, like, you Georgia and shit. No, like you could have gone to Spain. You could have gone Hungary. Italy. Netherlands. Austria. Romania. Romania? Yes. Romania yes. Slovenia. Slovenia qualified. Slovakia qualified. Check in there. All these Slavs, man. Georgia qualified. Ah, Kabbaliskelia. That's still crazy, though, to think. Question number three. We'll start off with buzzers. Buzzers, yeah. So yeah, buzzers. if you got your answer, you, you press the buzzer. Or both of Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let me hear your noise, brother. <laughs> Which team won the first Euro tournament in 1960? Soviet Union. Correct. How, how do you know that, that bro? Man says so, <laughs> Soviet Union, you know. No, I said, when, when, when I said, I said, that's wrong, G. <laughs> Soviet Union, fam. That's Soviet a wild Union. one. I just know that. I just that's know. a wild one. Still. Union, fair, the... fair enough to you, bro. Man says Soviet Union. Man. <laughs> how the hell you know that, G? I don't know. I just know that. I just know. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's serious, man. He's a history student. Yeah, it, yeah it uh, like, I studied uh, Russian history for time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, leave leave Russia out, man. <laughs> no, that's good tournament. I can't lie. Okay, next question. Who won the Golden Boot for the tournament in 2008? Mm. I'm, I'm going to just go Kane. 2008. 2008. Oh, 2008. Oh, I thought you said 18. I thought you said 18. Oh, now, oh, let, oh, let, let, me, let me bring that back. Let me bring that back. Oh, sorry. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Joe, you got it. Goes to Joe. The thing is, the thing Five is, seconds. I don't know if it was Torres, but I feel, I feel like I might get Turkish. I'm just going to say Torres. Correct. Oh, it was Torres. Yeah. Yeah. Spain, innit? Killed. Oh, nah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm cut. Man, held 2018, like. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> it's a game. Like, it's a bad day, How bro. How old was Kane back then? <laughs> okay, Kane was question. a better Arsenal back then. <laughs> 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 how many times? Like yeah. How many times in Euro's history have England failed to qualify for the tournament? You ain't got that one. Twice. Incorrect. Failed to qualify. Yeah. I'm gonna go four times. Three in it. Incorrect. Five times. Oh, yeah, there's quite a lot still. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Next question. Anyone get the point there? Be close no. Or just no. Nah, no. No point. <laughs> Next question. Which country won the Euro 2012 tournament? Spain. Correct. Oh, this guy's quick, Isn't it? <laughs> Hey, Marcus, you're getting whipped. He's, he's, he's <laughs> man's cooking me today, bro. I'll be real. Cooked, Marcus, then uh, next time I come, I'll be checking up Hello Facts, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe's different, though. Start yeah, yeah this guy here. Um, them, question number five. In the 2000s Netherlands slash Belgium tournament, France won the title in spectacular fashion. But who scored the decisive goal? It was Kessler. Mm. It's Trezeguet. Correct. <laughs> That's hard. What's up with this guy, bro? <laughs> oh, no. Bro, I took it all, man. In it? I took the whole history, man. Yeah, yeah, you're cooking it, bro. It's for, it's for I need some prim questions to get me some points. <laughs> <laughs> some Chelsea question. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Question number six. Which country was a surprise winner 
of the 1992 tournament. This was first. <clears throat> that was me, he, man. He was, Denmark, man. Still. Denmark. That was me. That was me. Denmark. What? Correct. How do, how do, clean you, sweet, how do you know this? Did, did you know the answer? No. <laughs> Mama <Mom's, mom's laughs> said, Did I know the answer, bro? I was just pressing it before him. I was, gonna, I was like, Fuck it. I might as well guess something. Bro. You know what I mean? I said, Denmark. I hear it. How the hell do you Man, know that? I hear it. How, how you know that, bro? I know they had, a, they had a mad surprise win, but to know that there was the. Nice exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only ones I could have bust were the Spain ones, and I, I fucked that up, so. Man said, Kane. <laughs> 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 Kane, That was funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Question number seven. <clears throat> Who is England's top scorer at the Euros Championship? You have to be my boy Kane. Incorrect. He's second though. Shearer? Correct. Come on. Yeah, cooked. Yeah. Isn't it? Last question. Is that of him, Shearer, or bloody Rooney, isn't it? Okay, last question, yeah? Mm-hmm. This is a landslide. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, Ironbridge. Ironbridge. Yeah, we'll check. We'll I don't we'll think there's back. a need, innit? I'll just, just say you got that dub, man. <laughs> 16 teams qualified for the 1996 finals for the first time, hosted by England. Yeah? So the oh, oh, oh. First oh. time hosted by England, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Which team won this tournament? Which team won during 96? Germany. Correct. Oh. London. Bro, how you Clean, how sweet, bro. Clean, London. sweet. London. At, at least get one wrong, bro. London. London. Sweet, I, I, baby. I can't even say London. much yet. Clean, sweet, London. baby. You got every question right. You got one wrong. Yeah. And then you got the one time. So you got seven out of eight. And then you yeah. got seven out of the remaining. Oh, yeah. No, eight out of the remaining nine. Yeah. Whipping, you probably, bro, I don't know how many know all of that. Once. This yeah, is a message G. to every Rondo contestant that takes part in this Rondo, yeah? <laughs> when it comes to general knowledge, you're not better than you. Damn. 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 Like nah, He's sending bad. a message. You get a guess, bro. All right, guys. So as we just kind of ran through it, one question was answered wrong by both. So that was a pass. So it's out of nine. Joel got eight right. Marcus got one. <laughs> he left with something. <laughs> so overall, I don't even know what he let's, let's, let's do the You're treating me like Brazil, bro. Let's, let's do the <laughs> that little Oscar consolation. <laughs> <laughs> the Rondos are in. So as we said, in the first round, Joel was scored eight and seven by myself and Marcus and finished with an average of 7.5. Marcus scored seven and five for his take on Anthony Gordon and scored an average of six. In the second round, Joel defended the, oh no, he was asked the question of the- Dark Horse. Dark Horse. And he scored an average of 6.75. And <laughs> <laughs> Marcus was asked, was, had to defend whether Southgate was the manager to be, and he scored an average of three. So Joel took both the two rounds. Yeah. We thought Marcus might make it back in the third <laughs> round, and Joel absolutely, absolutely <laughs> it, bro. One question was a pass, but he scored eight out of a potential nine points remaining. Let me pull up for Marcus, man. You got something. You Come got on, sighing. man. Do you know what I mean? So Joel wins all three rounds and to collect a landslide victory in this semi final. Joel? Round of applause, man. We will see you in the final. You see when Bayern whip Barcelona that time. I'll send a message. <laughs> <laughs> send a message. You'll send a message. Send, yeah? send a message. I need to see this guy against Kadar in that lot. In that It'll round. Be cold. Kadar. That'd be so that cold. Be cold. That'd be, that man will be buzzing yeah. before like. That'd be cold. That'll be cold.